Hello everybody, Adam here once again with another Fireworks Valentine's Day Vector Greeting Card Production Workflow Tutorial. So let's not waste any time and let's get right to it. This is the finished product of what you'll be learning how to create within this lesson. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is create a new document and set it to be the dimensions that I want. Now if you want this for print design, you might want to set your resolution a bit higher than 72. And let's make this 450. You can make yours any size you need it. Now I have this blue satin JPEG on my desktop and you can go and look for stock images online or just search in for satin and look for large satin type textures. You can grab any color you want and I'll show you how to make it red. That way you don't have to take the time to really try to make your own satiny texture which can be done in fireworks pretty easily but it takes some time and artistry to get it down and I really don't feel like taking the time to show something like that so we'll do it the easy way and let's go ahead and import that blue satin JPEG put it into place and you can see that it doesn't fit in exactly so I can just stretch it and move it around if I want and it really won't mess up the imagery unless I was stretching it bigger then it would mess up the resolution of the imagery. So you want to find a nice big one and manipulate it to be the size that you want. Let's make sure this is 800 by 450. So now highlight it and remember it doesn't matter if it's a gray satin, purple, whatever color that you find you can change to red. So I'll show you right now. You go to adjust color, hue and saturation and make sure you select colorize. Then once it's colorized you bring your saturation up and you'll see that it's very simple to change that satin to be any type of color satin that you want. So if I wanted it purple for instance or if I want it deep red and what I want is this deep red so I'll press OK. OK let's grab our pen tool and I'm gonna make a shape from about here click down let go to about here click down and hold and then drag. You can make this any kind of contour you want right about there looks good to me then I'm going to click down, let go, go down a little bit to here, click down, let go, and then come to about right there. Click down and hold, and then contour to kind of match that one up top. If the contour is not perfect, don't even worry about it because you can change it afterwards. Click down right here to make a sharp corner point, then click down right there to make a sharp corner point. Now, remember when I was saying you can manipulate these contours? You can. Just hit the sub selection tool. You can see this one needs to go up a little bit. There, that looks okay for now. Now I'm going to draw another shape behind that one by following the same contour. I click here once, let go, come over here, click down, let go, make the same contour that your existing shape has. Click down here, make a sharp corner point, go up, around, and just make sure you cover that whole top. Now what you're going to do with that one is give it a gradient of satin and we'll change the color on that satin gradient to a gold color. And actually we can go in our color palette right now and let's define a gold color and we'll save it to our palette by hitting OK. Actually I didn't save it to my palette. Let me go back in, hit add to custom colors. That way that gold is always right there for you and you won't ever have to define it again. Hit OK. And we're just going to make this one a little bit darker gold. OK. And this one we're going to lighten it up. Okay, so now it kind of looks like it's a shiny metal up there a little bit. And this one, you want to change to that gold color as well. Okay, so if I was to give it a bevel, let's see. Let's give it inner shadow. Inner shadow, and let's also give it another inner shadow. Make sure this one come from the bottom direction. And then you can manipulate how deep that shadow runs into the shape by selecting this little slider. And I'm going to make it only blur or fade one. That looks good right there. Now the one on the top, the inner shadow on the top, I'm going to turn that white. I'm going to bring it down to about, I don't know, three. Bring this down to one. Bring this up to 100%. Now if I drag this down a little bit, you'll be able to see the effects that I just put on there. And actually, we'll just bring it to front. Control, Shift, Up Arrow Key. And that'll place it on top of that other shape. I'm going to grab this and this together by holding Shift as I select them. And I can move it up or down to cover as much space as I want within my scene. And I want it just a little bit at the top over here left so I'll leave it just like that. Now what I'll do with this is add one more effect of drop shadow and that one you can make it stretch out as far as it needs to you see. Drop shadow maybe four. 
Okay, that's fine. Just so it has a little bit of lift and it doesn't look like it's laying down on the satin. So I'm just going to try something out and see if it looks okay. If it does, I'll go with it. So I'm going to highlight both of these shapes on top. I'm going to press Control C, Control V. I'm going to flip them horizontally and then flip them vertically. Then I'm going to just drag them into place where I want them. Right about there looks good. And I don't want this one so high as the other one. And I might even just to offset it. And don't worry, if you see your gradient go all wacky like that, don't even sweat it. You can manipulate that, bring it back to what it needs to be. See? Right about there. Now this, you want to make sure your inner shadow that was, this one should be black. Black. And then the one on top should be white just so we're respecting the light sources correctly. And this one on the bottom, I don't want it to be so dark. That's better. And the drop shadow, maybe I'll lessen its effect. Oh yeah, that looks great. And this one will probably even look better with a lessened effect. Yeah, it's fine. And actually this bevel, this inner shadow on the bottom, I don't want that to go so far in. Alright, that's exactly what I want. Now let's go into the auto shapes and let's grab out a heart. Now we're going to manipulate the vertex arc and the vertex and actually we might manipulate a whole bunch of that stuff. Let's bring this down, bring the clef up and then the breadth in a little bit. And you can shape your heart any way you like. Yeah, let's move this up, make it a little stubby guy. Let's bring the clef in a little bit. Okay, now you can size that to be any size you want while you're working on it. And it's probably best to make it big while you're designing the first. So we'll highlight that shape. We'll go to gradient and we'll give it a linear gradient. Now on top we want it to be a nice bright red. And on the bottom we want it to be a dark red. Even a little bit darker than that. Something like that. Nice deep red. Then we're going to put a little elliptical shape in the center to make it kind of jewel-like. We'll make sure that's solid, bright red. And then what we can do to that is go and blur it out. Give it a Gaussian blur and whatever you think is right. That looks good to me. I'm going to bring down its opacity a little bit. Now I'm going to take that shape and copy it. Control C, Control V. Now behind it, I should have another one that's just like it if I move the one on top. This one, I'm going to give it an edge of this gold color. Bring the edge up to, I don't know, maybe 10. And then we'll just make sure that this one fits nice and snug inside of that other one, which it does. And the outside one, you can give it no fill, none. So it's just a border. Now you want to grab that one. If you have any troubles grabbing that one, you can really just move this one out of the way while you work on this one. And this one we want to give a beveled effect. Bevel, inner bevel, and make sure that its fade is all the way up. The bevel height is all the way up. And the opacity is all the way up. And you can change the angle. I'm going to make my angle go directly 90 degrees from the top. So now let's grab this one and this thing by holding shift as we grab them and put it back into place. And you can make this golden border as deep as you need it to be. So if you wanted to go 14, it'll get a little bit thicker, you see? Let's go 15 with it. Now let's highlight the red gradiated heart on top. Let's press Control C, Control V, and let's make this one linear white. So let's go to white. We'll leave the bottom color of the linear dark red like that, and we'll just bring the opacity all the way down. Now what we're going to do is grab the pen tool and make a little curved shape. So you can go right about here to right about there and click down here, click down here, click down here. And you can get rid of this border or put it at one so you really see what's going on. Now highlight both of these shapes. The new white gradiated heart we put on top and this one you go to modify, combine paths and punch. So that'll punch that gradiated heart on top and then you can just manipulate the gradient to where you have kind of glossy effect that you want. Now we're going to grab this one, which is the red gradiated heart. Let's give it one more filter of inner glow. Let's make that glow blurred out a little bit more. This will help it make it look a little more jewel-like. Let's bring it in a little more actually. Instead of four, let's go about nine. That's good right there. I'm going to make this guy a little bit bigger and that looks just dandy. Now I'm going to draw one of those little sparkly stars on it. By drawing out a star shape, Manipulate its points to be as many points as you like. And then you're going to drag in the radius to make it a little sharp little star. Then give it a gradient of radial. 
And you want it to be white on both sides of this gradient. In this one, you want opacity none. Then you just move that. You put it into place where you want it. Shrink it down. Make it the size that you want it to be. You can put it there. And if you want two little shines on top, you can put another one right there. Yeah, let me mess with this gradient just a little bit. Right about yeah. And you can also bring down the opacity on that so it's less of effect if you want. Or you can choose to move that gradient around to manipulate the effect. Okay, I'm happy with that. You guys can play around and give it a whole bunch of glossy effects. You can see some of my older videos that show how to gloss things out real nice. And play with that to get it as glossy as you want. But what I'll do at this point is highlight that star. By holding shift, I'm going to highlight all these things together as I click them. So you should wind up with, let's see, the borders 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 shapes in your selection. Or you can just go like this and highlight everything and deselect things you don't want, like those three items. And then press Control G to group this. Now I'm going to press Control C, Control V, make a copy of that. I'm going to take the original that I can still ungroup and manipulate and move it over off to the side outside of my canvas. Then this one, I'm going to modify, flatten. So the first one, maybe I'll make that size. Now I want it to kind of hang from the top. So what I'm going to do is draw a rectangle from here to there. Now with this thing, I'm going to attempt to give it a gradient of satin. And you can see what that does. It kind of makes like a kind of like a flowy, wavy line there, especially if you have this one side that is zero opacity. Now this one that's white, I'm going to change to this gold color. So that way it kind of looks like a gold flowy thing thing. And you can even manipulate that effect so it looks really abstract. Now what we'll do is highlight this and bring it to the front. And then this as well. Highlight both of these by holding shift and control shift up arrow key. And it will kind of look like that thing is hanging in the back by a gold chain or gold lacy ribbon or something like that. I'll highlight both of these together. Press Control C, Control V, so it makes a copy. And actually, what I could do is modify, flatten these. That way, they don't warp out as I shrink them. Put that one there. Put it about right there. Let's make another one. C, Control C, Control V. Make sure this one gets shrunken just a little bit. And maybe we'll put, you know, three or four of them up there. Control C, Control V. Shrink this one a little bit too, and that, that should be enough. And you can configure those really to be anywhere you want them. Now let's grab the text tool, and you can type in, I love you, baby, or whatever your message is going to be to your baby. Let's make these all capital. Bring it up on the size a little bit, and I'm going to change it to Scriptina, because Scriptina is one of my favorite fonts for creating things like holiday cards, and things that really need a nice scripted text. Alright, so I'll change that to white. Bring up the size a little bit. Not so much. That works right there for me. And I'll give that a drop shadow effect. Maybe two. Bring this down to one, and this all the way up. Let's make this three and see what happens. There, that's good. Now on top, I want to write in the word two, colon. And you can change the color of that to be maybe like a dark brown. So it blends real nice up there. And then you just put the name of your baby. You can just copy that and bring it down here. And change this to from. That's even if you want to, you know, sign it or whatever. To Kayla from Adam. And let's make this one a little bit bigger. There we go. You can also put some effects on that text too if you like. I'm going to write a little more text up here just to say Happy Valentine's Day. Shrink that down so it's not so big. So it says Happy Valentine's Day. I love you, baby. To Kayla from Adam. And then you have all your effects in there, or whatever, nice juicy graphics. And you can also make little chocolates in fireworks. If you use the right gradients and a nice brown, nice light brown, you can make a nice vector looking chocolate. Heart shaped, whatever shape you want. You can also put some roses in here. Actually, it might even look better if we make this a little bit pink instead of full white. Just real light pink. It might blend better. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's as far as I'll take mine, and you can get as creative as you want with yours.